Hello anyone who might be watching and uh, happy 2015 from Paul here. And I'm just going to play this random track I made. Don't mind the weird project. <laughs> but I'm just going to play this thing. It just sounds cool. I gave it loud. So that's the track there, but the main thing I want to show in this funny, goofy little shorty looping track is the automation is, you can put it inside the beat bass line editor, you can put your automation in there and use it as an automation sequencer of sorts, I think that's the name for it. But I'm going to turn off all of these, and the one that I call fake LFO. I'm leave on. Well, I'm going to turn that one off for now so you can see what it's like without it. And I want you to watch the triple oscillator over here when I go back to play it. So I'm just going to do that. That's a chord progression. Okay. So, you can, yeah, I don't know if you can hear me talking too well while it's playing. I know my uh, sound input isn't the world's best, but that's what I got. <laughs> So, but you can hear a plain basic chord progression. Now I turn on the fake LFO, which I guess is actually automation sequence, but I'm using the beat baseline editor to save an automation track. And one of the tracks controls the wave shape in oscillator 1 on the triple oscillator. And the other one controls the first modulation channel. So now when I play it... <laughs> stuff like this, and I'll pause real quick, I think I have another track where I use LFOs to do this kind of thing, but you can really do a lot of neat stuff with your synths, not just triple oscillator, but all the other ones too, it let you automate their properties, you can do this kind of thing, and it's really cool, and I don't see it done very often in uh, the software, but you can do it in the software, and I'm going to pause and see if I can load up another track. But it's just doing these properties, you can get more interesting beat patterns or sounds from a single synth than having to use multiple synths or import stuff just by turning their knobs or dials in the middle of them playing. And you can put it in the automation or the beat bass line so it keeps looping as long as you have the track down. And it'll keep doing this pattern over and over again. So you can use it as a uh, automation pattern control type thing. Not just for beats and bass lines. So I'm going to pause my recording and see if I can find another track. And if not, it'll be the end of this if, it is, if I find it. And I'll start back up with the other track. Alright, I'm back on. So here's another track I found. It does a similar kind of thing. It's probably not as fun, but <laughs> it's got the automations uh, inside the beat baseline editor and their control and stuff on uh, modulation and uh, one of the waves on there. So I'm just going to play it and you can watch the triple S later. <laughs> If you notice that, but when you change the waves, you can kind of get like a feel of the pattern or something. So you can actually do this to a beat, and it sounds kind of cool. And sometimes you can just play a constant chord and just form the beat part of the pattern by changing your waveforms or your mix uh, control on the modulation. And I think there's one more track I have. And I have a feeling it might be a little cheesy, but I'm going to do it real quick. So I'm going to pause it one more time and then come back with a different one. Alright, here it is. It's kind of cheesy, but it's fun. Alright, this one's just a loop. It's not even like a full track. 
I'm still doing the same thing. I'm bumping the, one of the controls around for automation inside the beat baseline editor. Just have it repeat a pattern. And kind of reminds me of some cheesy stuff, but it's fun. Alright, update. <laughs> But now I'll turn off the other stuff so you can just hear what it's doing on the actual triple oscillator, so... And I probably have a peak controller bumping in the volume, that's why it's not so loud, but... It'd be loud if I did it now, so <laughs> that's it for now. But just showing you some of the neat stuff you can do in terms of automation, controlling your uh, synth and stretching out what the synth is capable of. So instead of just having a plain uh, static waveform in your synth or whatever, just mess around with these things and automate them. And you might be surprised what kind of cool patterns you can get. So I figured I'd just share that little tidbit. If you haven't experimented with it yet, it's just something to try. You don't have to do it. <laughs> It's just one of those little things that's kind of neat if you know it's there, you know that it's possible. And I think I'll do another video later on covering back uh, the way this, some of the new stuff in uh, LMS 1.1.0. It came out at the end of December of last year, just like a week ago, so at the time I'm recording this. So that's probably something I'll do. I'll just cover a few things that showed up in a new version of LMMS in case nobody else has seen it yet or messed with it yet. Alright, later guys.